Um, so, um, how should I put it? Like, how do I get started? You know, I think I've been always a, a kid that would like, you know, play in the playground and bounce around and run around. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, so that was the days, um, you know, catching champion kind of thing. Uh, so Paco, I think, so I think all of us watch Jackie Chan shows and stuff like that. So, yeah, so, so that was a kind of like a source of inspiration to, to just, not just say be cool, but you know, to get out of the ditch, um, the way he fights, uh, it's also very creative in terms of, um, the way he uses movements and also his everyday objects around and stuff around him. So mm -hmm. that was a source of inspiration. So that, that's what kind of like got me. You know, as with every other kid, you want to be a ninja, you want to be a superhero, you want to be, you know, like um, that kind of Spider-Man kind of character. So I begin to train a little bit more. Um, um, you know, it started with doing like just physical stuff, like trying to do a push-up. That was like age 10, mm. 9, 10. So that was maybe... How many years ago was that? 96. Oh. 96, I think. I mean... Those, those were, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm not the only one. I mean, every other kid will, at that point of time would have been, you know, like running about and stuff. But I think at that point of time, for me, is, is to, the desire to train to, to become stronger, uh, to be like a ninja. So I was training at the fitness corners, doing like bar balancing and uh, trying to do a chin up kind of thing. Um, yeah, but eventually you... that progressed onto a muscle up. Yes. Were you aware of parkour as, as, as a sport at that point, you know, when you were at that age, 9 or 10? No. Um, I think parkour came later to Singapore's shore. So that came a bit later. Um, I remember watching, so there was quite a number of touch points in my life about parkour. Um, the earliest one I can kind of like remember was watching, I can't remember what exactly was the channel, but it's, uh, then it became, because that was during T, TV, TCS days. So um, I think it was channel four or something like that. So uh, there was this parkour show that was online. Uh, it's, it's now, now I know why it is. It's basically Yamakazi uh, that was on. So uh, I see certain clips and scenes of it because it was a French movie festival, the kind of thing that was on screen. So I started watching that show a bit. Uh, so that was one of my first few touch points. And then during the years as I progressed, um, I think secondary school, um, there was a little bit, some talks about it uh, because that's where in the early 2000s, um, so about 2003, 4, 5 period, that was, uh, that's where YouTube was coming up. And we have computers at many at school, of course at home as well. But um, you know, uh, internet was you know gradually picking up in those days. So we begin to see some videos of um, people doing some parkour stuff. Um, so that was another touch point. And then gradually, I think there were people actually training. And so there was a magazine feature about it as well. Uh, until this day, I still have that magazine um, about people talk uh, a couple of Malay boys that was doing parkour. So these were all the little touch points that I have had through my years. Uh, can I just, uh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Can I just get the uh, get get uh, get you to share the the years lah, You know the years of these different touch points here. So uh, roughly at what you did you watch that film uh, the French movie Yamakazi you mentioned right? That was the very first uh, intro to yeah. parkour as a sport right? Roughly what what year? Correct. Uh, I can't exactly remember the. I can't really exactly remember the year of that that show. But it was during my secondary school years. I remember, All right. if I'm not wrong, teenage years. Lah. I I went on to I went on to so, correct. So I went on to really watch the full movie definitely during my poly years because during my poly years, uh, in the library there was some um DVDs uh of various movies and I would spend some of my time. Uh, in the library watching all these different movies it wasn't necessary of course always parkour movies it was just different movies and um, I remember watching vividly like those parkour scenes and that's where it got me it got me interested watching that particular uh, movie and at that time I think there was like two movies of that um, one is Yamakazi then the other one they, they have a funny name of it but it's basically the same show Yamakazi but they star them uh, they're doing it in Bangkok so so those were the two movies I remember
watching cool. in the library. Cool. Yeah, so uh, poly year sets was what, 2004, five, or five, six. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to just uh, 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 start from, you know, your, your 10 year old days again, you know, uh, because you, you told me that, you know, at, a, at the age of 10, you know, you, you wanted to become a ninja, you went to the park, you know, you were getting very physical and all that. Yeah, I was kind of like rushing you along a little bit just now. Lah. So, you know, in, in case you want to no elaborate a little bit more from there, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, so those years was important in a sense because, um, I mean, I have some older boys that will tell me, um, you know, why don't you try doing this or why don't you try this? And I find that these techniques were more working. I remember my very first war run um, was running up a letter box and the, the back of the letter box. So in front is the, where they put all the letters, right? Behind is a wall. And uh, all the boys, uh, or, or rather we were all waiting for the school bus. Then there's this, um, so some of the kids were sitting up there eating um, their bread or eating some bread. And then um, basically we all have to war up that wall in order to sit there and just hang out and chill together to eat bread. So that was one of the first few things I remember vividly where if, in order to achieve that war run, right? A lot, of, a lot of kids, um, when they kind of like first start, they will stand against the wall and then they will jump up and try to grab onto. But gradually, um, I, I was trying some other things and I, was, I noticed uh, it, it was more of those, you know, Erika moment where you realize that as you run towards the wall, if you step up high enough, then that makes the work a lot easier. Yeah, so, so those were things, um, you know, during those moments where you realize certain things about, okay, so if you train this way, you do these certain things, you will make certain technique, uh, you know, come out and, you know, so, so those were, those were the days. Uh, or let's say we are playing block catching, then, you know, you learn to jump off from, um, if you know that if you jump off from like in between second and first story, the in between, there's this staircase area that you can climb over and jump off. You know that you couldn't die. Um, and then you kind of like test the knee as a kid. So I remember getting injured uh, uh, on, at my knees because I, I jumped, um, I thought the same height applies almost everywhere. Uh, so if you play catching in Tampanese uh, block, you know, that, that height is the same as the Pasiris one. So there was this particular one that it wasn't. And then uh, my, my knees kind of like smacked together because the impact was too much. So I went home limping that day and I, was, I didn't dare tell my mom exactly what I did. Yeah, so, so those, were, those were things like, that you gradually as, understand how to test about you. As young as you were 10, you were doing all this uh, dangerous uh, stuff already. I, I don't think I'm the only one. I think all kids are to some right. extent. Right. Like, um, you know staircase uh, in HDB, that they, there's this rounders. Yeah. So I would try to climb in between the, the, the stairs. Instead of going up the stairs, I'll try to, try to climb it. And because I think I was quite tiny as well, so I can fit in the little gap. So those were things that you're just trying to test the limit. No? And also, sometimes you watch shows and then you, you want to try to mimic them, like Spider-Man and stuff like that. Yeah. So okay. those were the days. Huh, that I began and to was it all? Try. Was it all done all by yourself? So I mean, was it like self-taught per se? You know, did you so-called learn all these tricks, all these stunts entirely on your own? I think it would be quite um, uh, I shit. The, the words slip my mind. So basically, um, I I don't think anyone can claim that. Oh, I'm all self-taught. You know, I'm you know I'm so genius and. So, I don't think that is wise and I think that's quite um, so generally there's always a change exchange of ideas and you know where you, you play with your friends and then they, they kind of like tell you oh you should do this you know you slightly faster that kind of thing and sometimes you realize it for yourself and sometimes you look at what you do and then you try to do the same thing and then you realize oh that, that method works kind of thing. So you did so have a you did have a group of friends la, you know uh, yeah, similar age had, uh, around uh, 10 yes, years uh, old yeah in Tampines, neighborhood friends la. doing no, the same no, that thing. was in Simi. All right. Yeah, I have neighborhood friends in Simi. All right. So the, the next the next point in your life was when you saw the Yamakazi film, right? For the first time on on, on, on local TV. Yeah, but, but I don't think that one particular film like, you know, it as 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 much as it is in terms of parkour, it was mm. uh an impact. I don't think that one particular film is like the whole impact. I mean, there were other shows, right? There was Spider-Man, there was like uh, Jackie Chan and stuff like that. And, and I wouldn't say that, that 
Yamakazi is a whole big impact because um, how should I put it? So so Jackie Chan shows always film uh, always shows very like parkourish kind of move, right? Uh, even the founders they they themselves were inspired by him. But what the what they what the founders really um did manage to do is that they managed to coin a term that allow you know the rest of the other people at large to associate with them um that particular term uh, in which they gave that move uh association for us to to record, to rally behind. Yeah. But just much like um so I was trying to drive home that um you know when Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon reached Hollywood and it was a big thing to them. Yeah but but to us in Asia right it was it was just another like Hong Kong Usia piano Usia flick. So so I think this is this is the difference between um the the impact that it had in Asia versus in you know the Western countries, I guess. But was there a particular point in your life where the awareness of parkour began for you? You know, you knew that hey, you know, there's this thing called parkour, and and and, and I really wanted to get into it. You know, I, I really wanted to so called like uh, be a part of this 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 community, etc. So for me, it's like um, I think it was more like. Uh, understanding and identifying that what I what I'm capable of is known as parkour by the general public in by large, um, and before and even then yeah, at that point in time, uh, when people hear parkour, right, uh, even like say ten years ago, people don't even really know what parkour is. Maybe uh, it's an underground movement, urban movement amongst the youth. Uh, that's where the youth will know to uh, and and is a very minute amount yeah but just in general society at large they will still call it oh you're monkey around you're doing dangerous stunts and stuff like that so so that's where um eventually why i created a, a academy and i set up my own academy and stuff it's, it's so that to you know to better educate the public what parkour is and that to so at first it was educate the public what parkour is and then it was educating the public that we are not like adrenaline rush kids uh, we all really there's a lot of quite quite a bit of thought and calculation into all the movements and that we are not like you know waiting for to go to the hospital kind of thing yeah okay so uh when did you start taking parkour seriously reason that I'm trying to get you to so-called recall all these important so-called turning points in your life, right, is because, you know, like in storytelling about a human, uh, a, a human story, you know, a human a person's life journey, right, you know, you kind of need to know like chronologically how does this person, be, you know, evolve from like 10-year-old, a purely, you know, a childlike, you know, a childlike experience with this physical stance into like having this self-awareness about you know like okay this is parkour globally you know so many other people are doing it and therefore you know i want to you know be a, become a part of it and and then you know uh, how how that, that and, and that leads you to uh setting up your academy and doing what you do today etc right yeah so i'm just trying to bring you back to this so-called important turning points in your life lah you know, to just kind of like charge your life story a little bit clearer. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get there. Um, because what's going on is that during, so during after poly years, um, I kind of like know that I was doing parkour. Um, it was it's just knowing that I have this skill, you know, this parkour skill. Uh, I think it really came in super useful. Um, and it really... To a degree, solidify me that hey, I really got something special, uh, because I think poly years, you know, there were still um, how do you call it, um, athletic friends around, so it doesn't feel that special. Uh, but during national service, that's where that's where I think uh, there was a first big uh, revelation that okay, I really got something that's that's apart and not just I'm just not I'm not just fitter than other people. Uh, I really has a to some degree of skill. Uh, national service I was in a recruit right so I was in civil defense and then we all had to run through the standard obstacle course so I, I excelled like really well in the standard obstacle course and uh, because of that I became a physical training instructor and that's where I got all my head knowledge on sports science and everything right? 
And then my favorite thing doing uh, uh, coaching at that point of time, instructing lah, basically at that point of time, uh, being a PTI. So a lot of people also say us as uh, the gun people, right? But uh, my favorite thing to do at that point of time was doing SOC, um, as in teaching people how to do SOC and helping them overcome their fears, such as uh, things like the balancing beam. Because it was high, right? It was just, it's not that high. It's about maybe 1.5 meters up or about, yeah, about 1.5. But by the time you go up, it was about 1.5 to 2 meters up. And I can see recruits trembling or I can see trainees trembling. And then I'll lead them by the hand. And I remember them feeling so stunned by me because there was four lanes and I was jumping from one lane to the other lane, like effortlessly. Uh. So they were like, oh, wow, this guy is like jumping from one lane. I'm like just trembling, just trying to walk. So there's, those are these little points that helps me to understand that. Okay, so, so I really got uh, parkour capability. And all, my, all the rest of my PTI training was asking, not training, um, my peers like, well, was asking, hey, do, do you like do parkour? I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah. Didn't feel that was that much of a big deal. Um, so by the time I come out from national service, I was in one year for Bible school. And um, so there was a community service uh, Thing that I was doing and they were outreaching to reset uh, at, at risk youth so I was trying to use parkour to, to also save them um, so that was one of the few, few things that I did uh, and during that period um, because of the two years in NS and then that, that few months of interaction or before the at risk youth I felt that I can probably do some, some good out of it I can probably like you know um, and it was that I was about 22 23 so that was going to my uni years and, and I always want to do my own thing. So I studied business school and during, the, during studying business school, I tried to build the business, which is, you know, what it is today. Lah. So that was like 2009, 2010. That's where I tried building the business um, oriented around all the things that I've learned as I, so yeah, and th that's how it is still now. So... You want to tell me a little bit more about the story with the at-risk youth, you know, how did you use parkour to help these people? Um, I wouldn't say help, it's just that, um, you know, so in the, in the at-risk youth centre, um, I can't remember what's the name, oh, it just slipped my mind. But, um, so basically at this centre, they offer different, so it's a place for the kids to hang out after school if they have nowhere else to go. Or uh, they don't want if or generally if they don't want to go home, so at least there's a place for them to hang out. So um, each of us uh, volunteers. Um, so this is, yeah, I was in Bible school, so I was attached to this place as one of those volunteers. Uh. And then uh, each of these volunteers will ask you also, what skill do you have that you think can use to integrate the youth? And you know, so so um, some people was able to cook, and some people was you know play you know, play guitar and stuff like that. I don't have all these kind of skills, but I, I'm really good at parkour. So, so I'll just, or uh, I can do this stuff. So, um, of course, at the point of time, they don't know what it is. And then I need to tell them, oh, so basically it's the capability, it's the French of my capability to, you know, climb and run and walk and stuff. So like, oh, okay. So try it all. I mean, also don't know, right? So nearby that, that youth center, that was a playground. And it's one of my favorite playgrounds um, that used to be around the island. It's a castle shaped playground. So, so I'll teach the, so, I'll show some of the use, some of the few things that you can try and as a physical activity to, to play around with. So that's that long. I wasn't there for very long. I was maybe there for about a month at the most too. I can't remember. But yeah, so it's a very short amount of duration. But that, that helped me to realize that, you know, I, I really, so prior to building my own business and stuff like that, I, I kind of like want, always wanted to impact the lives of people, uh, of youth in general. So that, that made me realize that actually, this can be a good means for me to do some good. However, around that time, right, was there really like a parkour scene already in Singapore? That was like in 2000, 2000 prior to 2010, right, you mentioned? Correct, correct. So yeah. that was, uh, I finished my NS at 2008. So 2009 was when I was uh, teaching all the youth at risk. It wasn't a lot. La. It's just one of those experiences that helped me realize that, you know, uh, we, along with the experiences during my national service, this, this touch point helps me realize that you know, I probably really should do something and not waste a talent. You know, you know what they used to say, that, like, if you have a talent and you don't use it, it will wither and die. And it's a waste. Uh. 
So I thought, you know, to do some something out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so whether yeah, that was yeah. a scene, um, yeah. there is, there is. Uh, I'm pretty sure. No, now it's no longer just pretty sure. I'm, I, at that point of time, there was a group of other boys that had um their own parkour scene and stuff like that. But I, personally, I've always been a bit more, you know, uh, I wouldn't say loner, but um, you know, I still had a, quite a bit of childish toy at that point of time, I guess. Like um, in case you ever wanna, you know. Uh, how should I say? Like, I always feel that it's a it's a skill that you don't want to. It's like a spy, a superpower kind of skill, and you shouldn't like you know keep magnifying it as though you are very good at it kind of thing. It's a it's a good skill to have, and you know. Yeah, I was going through that period lah, so I was trying to understand like, you know. Uh, elaborate a little bit more. I wasn't quite following you on that. It's okay. Um. So so this is. Okay, I was I was young <laughs> and I was stupid. So so I was still thinking along the line that, you know, if you ever want to go and fight crime with super, you know, ever want to go and, you know, don a costume and try to fight crime or like um want to be recruit maybe be recruited as a spy kind of thing, then you shouldn't uh showcase to the public this kind of thing. This kind of skills. It's like reading Spider Man, Peter Parker, how he keep his skills hidden kind of thing, like as Spider Man kind of thing. You yeah, shouldn't, so, so you shouldn't be a show off, like you shouldn't show off your skills too much for people to kind of you know know to what <laughs> what yeah you want to basically keep 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 a low profile okay correct so in in case you know you want to do some like you know superhero stunt kind of thing and and you know fight crime kind of thing you you still can maintain a double life in that sense mm. so like I say is absolutely like childish thoughts but um that was my Oh, we had a part time. You know, I, that that really changed in maybe two thousand ten when I really have to figure out what to do in my life. Um, and I was going to business school. And then that's where I, you know, that's where I come to the realization. Okay, I'm not gonna fight crime. I'm not gonna. I'm not. Government's not gonna pull me in to become a a, a spy agent and kind of thing. So be realistic. You got a skill. Do something with it. So so that that's that's where you know it changed like. So does that mean that uh, you were doing all this entirely by yourself at that point? No, I have friends. <laughs> I have friends who will climb rooftop with me. That will uh train, train as in like the training wasn't like you know oh we're gonna do this amount of reps today you know we're gonna like climb this wall and we'll go home until it wasn't so serious. It was more like hey um hey guys come on let's hey, you can can you climb this wall you try uh, you know that it's more like. You know, boys being boys, like urging each other on to do stupid stuff to a degree. Um, yeah, so so it was more like that, lor. Yeah. Well, and you, also to, would, yeah, would you consider that it was a relatively big scene? Meaning, you know, like parkour, parkour was was popular among you know youngsters of your generation at that point. Was it a was, significant? Okay. Um, okay, on this aspect, I think it's it's hard to fully. Oh, sorry, it's fu- hard to fully say because um even even through my ten years as been doing the business, right? There are there are seasons where people are like oh a lot of people want to try because of maybe some association movies or some like that, uh or or some uh hit videos on YouTube, and then there are seasons where there's no one, you know, or people get busy with life and exams and stuff like that. So so I always felt that there's this up and down kind of feel. All through the years, yeah. Do you think it so, is because parkour wasn't as promoted as the other so-called sports, official sports? You know, I think because parkour isn't as um widespread or well known, mm. it is more of a a youth. We all know it exists, and you know, <laughs> but we don't. We have an idea, an inclination, but we don't exactly know what it is. We just our idea of it is probably or uh, being able to do you know climb rooftop, do stunts, uh, stunts like you know um vaulting over structures, climbing over walls, mountain things that we see on on like in movies, like the chase scenes and stuff like that. So that's our normally our association with parkour or like in games like um games that you know superheroes like uh running from rooftop to rooftop. So those are the common association even to today uh, for parkour. So I believe that, yeah. So that that's those are the kind of association that we have had during those those period of time. 
And did you guys ever get yourself into trouble? I mean, like, you know, how, how do you go up and climb rooftops, etc., in Singapore without being found out by other people? Um, during my secondary school days, I can't read. So, so this was the time that where even cameras right are very like you know not so sharp. Mm. It's not like today's right. Mm. Like sh- back then, cameras. Were, so so we were climbing to schools at night. Like we meet up at night, and then we climb into other people's schools and just to explore around. And then if let's say like we hear police or anything happens, we can always make a run for it and break for it. Um, times were a bit different. Uh. There wasn't YouTube, no, there wasn't like Facebook and Instagram where people are posting your rooftop pictures kind of thing. So a lot of rooftop doors were actually open. Um, it was a lot, security was a lot more relaxed back then. Uh, so it was a lot easier to climb up the rooftops, you know, to try going from one point to the other. So yeah, so it's just different now. But nowadays, you know, like there's so much Instagram videos on pictures on rooftop kind of thing on so, so it becomes so prominent that you know security has really heightened over all these years. Like the doors are not just physically locked but magnetically locked kind of thing. So the landscape has changed lah. Of course, um, climbing rooftop and all doesn't mean that you know. Uh, it, it, of course, it's not parkour. Uh, to, today, today we make a very strong distinction. But back in the day, it was it wasn't. You see, those those were all encompassing. But today we, we make a very strong distinction because uh, over the years, a lot of people, a lot of kids, in order to try to prove themselves that you know we are cool and stuff like that, which we honestly get and understand because we all were teens, right? Um, you know, they, they climb rooftop and then they try to pick, posting pictures on themselves and stuff like that. Um, back then we, we did it because, not because uh, we're trying to post a picture and get a like or, or trying to tell our friends or anything like that. It was more like we did it because um, I wouldn't say totally just the thrill of it, but it's a, it's a matter of, you know, it's a challenge to yourself and also to get into places where, where people normally don't go and to, to, to see certain things where people normally don't see unless they have money, right? Like, in order for you to go to some rooftop, you need to pay money to, and you need to be of a certain age. But, you know, we were young and then we just want to try new stuff. And so that's the difference there. To be honest, I mean, because now that we are doing a TV show, you know, TV show for Media Cup especially has to be, you know, very politically correct and all that. Lah. So we will not be able to feature any so-called illegal stuff that you used to do and all that because, you know, then, you know, we are, I'm putting you on national TV to tell tell us that, you know, all young people at that point in Singapore were, you know, breaking law, etc., etc., right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I presume you guys were so-called breaking law a lot lah, as, as teenagers, right? And as youngsters. Yeah, yeah with this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I mean, just help me understand a little bit more, you know. Uh, what was it that kept you going with this? You know, it's a very niche. It's a very small sport you know we can call it a sport today you know but yeah, it yeah. was Correct. it was quite obscure i presume you know and furthermore it involved like breaking the law as well as getting into trouble and also injured right so what was it that you were in it for i think the the years in national service um changed quite a bit of my perspective on doing it um i realized that you know uh I can, you know, I, during those national services, I, I was learning how to coach people, right? And I realized that it can be used as a means of uh, sport to enhance someone's physically. It enhances someone's confidence. I remember helping those recruits um, through overcoming certain obstacles like, you know, the balancing beam and or even doing the war run kind of thing. I remember those and, and those experiences of not just helping those guys, but also of my own experiences, being able to do it you know, gave me a, to a degree, a, a certain degree of self-confidence because of that. Um, so I realized that these are very positive things that can be brought up in people. And so I thought to do something out of it. Yeah. So uh, was there a place in Singapore that you discovered because of parkour that people don't know about? 
that you can share with us as long as you're not so-called breaking the law and all that like, as long as we can so-called shoot it together with you yeah um so just sorry the, the former question was uh what kept me going and stuff like that right yeah you can go um, on a bit more what kept me going yeah i think all of these experiences plus um the the talent that i kind of like realized that i have I felt that, you know, why not make something out of it? And, and even though no one knows about it and no one, no one cares at that point of time, yeah, I felt that if it's, if it's going to be, it's going to be up to me. Of course, not me alone, uh, but, um, you know, I know that I've got something to give and to contribute. And so, and I'm still young at that point of time. So I thought I'm still young now. Like, I mean, 30 plus, but, but it's still, I still have many years ahead. Right? So I thought, um, you know, why not make something out of your own life and, and give it a shot? Because while you're yet young, even if you fail, right, you know, it's okay. Right? So I just persisted. Right? I just kept trying. Right? Um, first, it was like, so, so 2010, we, we, I started a company. I, I tried doing a lot of different things. I tried meeting up with, the, with some youth from like the parkour people. I begin to understand, I, then that's where I really dive in and understand, okay, so what's the scene? I, so my friends are, and I, some of them are going out of it. There must be a whole other, you know, there must be guys like me. See if I can connect with them, try to connect with them. Oh, then I realized I can't really connect with, with some, some of the people. Um, and then, I, but I still really want to do something out of my own. So I thought to try to gather some guys who have similar ideas with me and just roll with it. So it, everything is very bit by bit. It's, uh, at first, it was just one day of the week um, meeting up um, at Scape. Uh, so we are, uh, at a part time, I managed to negotiate with Scape to be under a youth, uh, a company that was um, getting youth together. So it's, it's something like what I did during my uh, Bible school day with this community service um, center. So it's almost the same thing. So I, I, I can get around that. And then we, we are being given one day of the week to, to try to do something out of it. And then after that, gradually, I, I understand, okay, so, so this is quite okay. This is going well. Then why not try to make it two days of the week? Then I begin to understand, okay, so with all the business school understanding and learning, I, I try to uh, get myself out there, get a company out there. Uh, we work out with uh, Groupon at that point of time to sell our classes. So I, I created... I created classes like my, based on my experience, experiences during my national service, uh, how we created lesson plans and stuff like that. So I got some boys to help me out um, to organize things. You know, I, I tried to dedicate, I tried to allocate because I was still juggling, juggling school and, and business at a point of time, right? So those were the things that I tried. So we, we did one day, then we did two days. And then um, gradually, we expanded, I expanded into like three days, a week, four days a week. And, and yeah, so stuff I all. So gradually we grew. And then by the time I come out from school, then I just decided to take it on as a full-time job. Um, so with school done, um, it became my full-time, right? So I threw my, myself like wholeheartedly into it. So then, then we began, I began to do proposals to, to try to secure business loans um, or, you know, grants, that kind of thing. So a day in, day out, was just doing for both day in and out, um, submitting. You know, there's a lot of failures, uh, no doubt. But, but eventually, there was a company that that um, hook link up us to call to cure So that was like a 15k, and I knew that I, I was doing all those um, proposals because I wanted to do my own parkour gym. Um, I think around the world all the time, uh, normally. Parkour people will train in gymnastics center and kind of thing. But I, I, I didn't really, I, truth be told, I didn't really have that money like, to go to all these kind of places. Um, so I, I, I felt that if you're gonna, if you're gonna give money to someone else, might as well save that money and then build your own. So, so that's what I did. Um, save money and then uh, manage to scale business loan um, and build my own little parkour gym. So at first it was just five meters by five meters space, which is extremely small, like, basically. Um, then we grew like year by year, we tried to improve every single year, you know, get a, getting a bigger space and forcing the rent down if possible. 
So yeah, yeah, it's been five years uh, since we five come six years, I guess, since we have our own power for dream. Yeah. What was the business idea back then? I mean, okay, you started with this uh, business plan and idea when you were still in the uni, right? And then you, you, you told me that, you know, it started out with gathering your like-minded parkour friends once a week, then it grew to like, what, five times a week, all right? But what was the business plan? Mm -hmm. There wasn't really a business plan. <laughs> it was like, I think there's a term business, your skin is in the in your skin is in the business or your along that line. It's basically car kind of started off with nothing, right? Uh, literally nothing. It's just trying to um create uh alliances or collaborations and try to make things happen. So there wasn't really a business grand business laid out business plan. It was more like, okay, so um, you know, why don't we try this? Uh why don't you try this? Uh, if it doesn't work, then you know that it doesn't work. So why don't you try it differently kind of thing. So it wasn't like a laid out business plan. It was just, a, for me, it's just, I'm going to devote at least this X amount of years of my life to make it work. And then I'll review again, have I made it work? And do I want to continue pushing on? I think, like I said, that um, there, there must be a degree of passion because any sane-minded people that right, would have dropped out a long time ago because there is no money involved. I mean, if there is, it's like peanuts for extraordinary amount of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's crazy. The amount of work, the amount of proposals, the amount of trying to keep, you know, keep everything together, the team, because, uh, you know, when I gather all these boys younger than me, they were always like, you know, fights about things that, you know, by then I was like 20 plus, these guys were like, teens like 15 16 17 18 and then you understand that you know all these fights are very it's not it's not worth the effort it's it's, it's really you guys are fighting over very stupid stuff and then here i'm trying to build a business but i'm not that much i'm like probably eight seven eight to seven years six years older but so i think there's a degree of different perspective in terms of what we are going through in life not that I'm better, it's just that we're going through different phases in life, right? But did you have an idea at that point, how were you going to make money out of this business? Did you know about making money? I mean, okay, obviously, you went to business school. Setting up a business is to make money, generating, you know, so-called cash flow, profit, so that you can sustain it, I think, right? I think at that point of time... Uh, uh, okay, at that point of time, it wasn't about making money. The, the talk wasn't about making money. The talk was about making a living. <laughs> yeah, making a living in terms of, you know, like, if we can get some money, it's already like, you know. So, living, living, uh, it's quite a miracle. Living, living, making a living, this living does not entail any money, is it? It has to entail, it, okay, so in order to make a living, you have to, you know, create money, right? But mm -hmm. going into it, the understanding was, I'm not going to become, you know, you dream that, you know, you're going to make a big business out of it. But you understand that if you can even get a $20 out of it uh, from anyone or $5, $10 from anyone willing to pay you, uh, well, it's really quite a big miracle really. Uh, because you know, you're, you're providing a service based on, you know, you didn't think that what you had was that precious. It is precious to you, but you didn't understand the value that people would see in you. Would you say that? You're, you're kids, right? <laughs> I mean, we are, we are like 20 plus and then my coaches are like 17, 18 and then the people who are coming were like 20s and 30. I, I have to tell you, I find it so... Sorry, you woke up. I didn't hear. Oh, no. <laughs> I wanted you to know that I find it so inspiring. So, uh, to, uh, so inspiring to hear this from you as a young person. You know, like you, 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 you were so innocent almost. You know, it's a lot of another word for it is naivete, right? <laughs> it's just you're just being you're just yeah, being completely yeah. naive yes. about it. Uh, okay. I was. 
I was stupid, man. I, if if I have been right, if I have been right, I would not have done. Have gone this. into I, it in the first place. Yeah, I I wouldn't have. You you wouldn't. How should I put it? You you didn't understand the amount of pain that was involved. Oh yeah, you, I you can didn't imagine. understand the the amount of you know like slandering that will come the <laughs> the 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 backsplash that will come. You know, wow. Yeah, you 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 just didn't expect. You, you thought that you thought that oh, I got something good in the world, and you know, um, I'm gonna roll with it, and you know, the world is is gonna see how awesome this thing is, and and that's about it, lor. And then you you understand, you know, that the world is a nasty place, and that you you need to become stronger. Would you would you say that would you say that you were the first person in Singapore to set up this business for parkour? No, no, you I were not. not. I, yeah. I am not. There were there were a couple of other guys earlier than you. Correct. I I'm pretty sure there was a lot of teens. There was a lot of you know we were all teens. Teens we all and and during so all the years that I've told you about about me doing parkour and stuff, it wasn't like parkour is the only thing in my life. You know now. The generation now, right? I see, I see the 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 gen the second the next generation that is doing parkour right now and as a business, uh, they literally have parkour, like all they can eat, sleep, drink is all parkour. At my point of time, right? I don't think the people of my generation are like that. I if there is, I I honestly don't think so. All of us confirm have had play computer games. We all confirm have had you know other side things. Parkour was just one aspect in our life. I don't think it was the whole life. And I don't think at that point of time, any of, our, of us would think that, oh, gonna make, we all have that dream. But we all quickly very realized that, well, it's a, it's a, you jolly well understand that, you know, it's gonna be a rough road ahead. And, and it's so rough that you want to dream about, oh, I'm gonna make billions of money and something. That's not gonna happen. And I say that, can I say that, uh, you know, this, this, this innocence <laughs> that you had, you know, for setting up the company, you know, uh, rounding up all your parkour friends together and, and basically just went on this ride, yeah, uh, in a way was commendable because, you know, you were one of the first ones in Singapore to actually uh, promoting parkour as a sport, as a good sport, you know. In your own ways, right? I mean, like government wasn't doing one. it. You were not the only one. Were, were there a lot more, or what? What was the scene like? There was, there was at least one major one at the point of time. Um, that guy. So, so, so personally, I don't really spend a lot of time with all those other guys. I I spend time with my own friends, right? My own friends whom kind of quickly when we hit 20 plus, they all realize that, you know, we, are, we want to do something more practical in life. They is, all think that I'm stupid. Is, I mean, this other, that I'm stupid as well. is this other guy called Ashton? Because I read about him online too. Is, is he Ashton? Correct. That's yeah. him. So okay. he is one of them. There's a, there's a few of others as well. Mm. Yeah, but so, he's one of the major. Would, would, you, would you think that he's much more successful than you are? When we started? Yeah, definitely. Mm. He 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 knew exactly where to go and stuff like that. I I'll, yeah, I think our approach was different, and then the places that we we approach was different. So so we have different yeah, and I I probably think that we also don't see eye to eye, which is why we all did our own things. Yeah. Okay. So tell me how. Did you, okay, from 2000, 2010-ish until today, it's been 10 years of you doing this for a living, right? <laughs> With or without money, but for a living. So how did you make it? What have you done over the last 10 years, so-called professionally with Paco? No, if it's, if it's without money, then I would have started earlier lah, because I was still coaching all the, all the youth at risk. So that'll be earlier. And then if you include my two years in national service, you know, I have been coaching for quite a quite a long while now. Um how sorry, what was the question again? 
question is what have you done with parkour in the last 10 years you know to so-called sustain your living because you are still at it today right you haven't given up you're still promoting yeah. parkour yeah so i think um so 2010 was trying to tell people what is parkour 2000 10 to 2000, maybe 11, 12. We're still telling people why it's Paco. Uh, by 2013, I think, we, I think we were on national stage for one of the segments in National Day Parade. We were a very small, tiny segment in the extreme sports. So in the extreme sports, there was uh, BMX, there was skateboarders, there was Paco. Yeah, so we were a very tiny segment. So that was 2013. So gradually, people understand what hey, there's this thing called Paco. So the, the news about parkour began to pick up like a bit more to the general public by then. By 13, 14, by 15, uh, people would think, they, they all know about parkour, but would think that it is a youth adrenaline rush kids trying to envision their life. So <laughs> it was, by then, it was trying to educate people that, you know, no, this is not, uh, it's about sports, it's about training. And then, Thank God there was uh, there was like um, Groupon and stuff like that that allow us to promote our business. And then there was Faith. Then there was all the Guava Pass and stuff like that. So we were interacting with people of um, of executives, and they they were interested in doing parkour. And then that gave us the opportunity to educate them that you know you know parkour is all calculated. We train. We we all of this is training. It's not just um, risking yourself to train and you know to test yourself and then put yourself at harm's way. No, it's all, you know, you have to train prior beforehand in order for you to attempt. And even if you attempt, you understand how to fall. We teach you how to fall. So those were all the, all the years. So I think all through from 15 to, so with our own gym, right, that, that even gives a lot more legitimization that, you know, parkour is, um, you know, picking up. That parkour is, um, is a sport. It's a discipline. And, um, yeah, it's out of motion. It's not just like things that you see on TV, you know, big flips, big stunts. It's uh, it's just as simple as you bettering yourself, uh, for yourself in bodily movement wise. Yeah. So that was 2015 all the way to the day about to today lah, even to today. But no, by today it's different already. By today, um, by 2018, uh, 1819 and 1819, right? People already know that parkour is uh, there's a lot of training involved, but there's also risk involved in the movement. And then by 2018 and 19, um, then they begin to see the there's this other group that, that was teaching elderly and stuff like that. It was heavily focused on that. <laughs> and that caused teaching yeah. elderly people parkour. Correct. So wow. so the movement was different. The movement sure. was um correct. Elderly so the idea friendly, has huh? correct, but it has entirely shifted to understanding that parkour is about Mastering your own movement, mastering your own capability. Mm. It's not about being big flips, big stunts. Mm. So that, that that perspective has changed over the years gradually. So by by now, by today, I, I believe that people have an understanding that parkour is uh, you know it's not just about big flips, big stunts. Not so much anymore. So, all those all those all those victories that we won mm. in terms of ideological mm. victories, um, they came over time, right? Um. But that doesn't mean that um, everyone has hook, uh, is, is in line with us here. Some of us, some, some people still have the mindset that parkour is a youth race adrenaline rush kids kind of thing. So, so it is a, it's an ongoing process. It doesn't mean that, it, but what has changed is the paradigm shift in mindset in the general consensus. But is everyone thinking that way? Not necessary. So it's an it's ongoing battle. It's a, it, and you always just take one stupid event, you know, and one bad news rap, uh, positioning us in the wrong way. And then we have to fight that whole battle all over again. So can I say that you basically make money out of coaching? Yeah, so, but I cannot depend on that alone because um, it wouldn't be enough. I mean, it's, it's just isn't enough. Even to today, it is also not enough. Not, not because I'm money hungry or anything. It's just dollar and cents wise in terms of cost of the rental, cost of, you know, if I want to build up my staff, my team, I need to save up a lot more. I need a position. 
you know, it's just by now that it's actual like finances, understanding, you know, balance sheet and stuff like that. Yeah. Back in the day, it was just, oh, we make, wow, we make $5. Wow. You know, it's different now. Um, yeah. So, so I forgot what, what was my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, I mean, you have general public in Singapore coming to your gym to, to learn, right? And they kind of pay a membership fee, you know, uh, uh, for, uh, to you. Right, is that correct? But but marketing never stops, now. You still have to brand. You still have to market. You still have to tell people so that we exist. As, as opposed to what this Ashton guy is doing, I kind of like look him up a little bit. Uh, he does a lot of this. Uh, he has he has a talent agency, right? Like talent management <laughs> company, right? So he so called like you know uh, provides like stunt performers for movies for you know live events that kind, right? So and you're not doing that, lah. <laughs> No, no, I am, I am. I'm doing that. You're also doing um, that, okay. Correct. So I think, but the difference is that uh, my focus is heavily on coaching. I think his focus at a point of time was heavily on performance. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, so don't quote me on that. So I'm really not sure. But uh, coaching all this uh, is my main. I, I focus heavily on it. But I also do like uh, providing talents and stuff like that. Because that, that, that was a huge chunk of income. Yeah, yeah. I would Especially you... like you would make much more money from talent management, you know, Correct. because you can charge Correct. big fees. Correct. But, but those, um, those, no lah, I mean, we, it's a, it's a gradual learning curve on learning how to charge people and stuff like that. Because, <laughs> uh, it, I'm a, you know, back then as a youth, I don't know how the youth today handle lah. Like, I deal with youth who literally tell me, oh, I want to get $500 for, for this X uh, half an hour show. I mean, Back then, to me, uh, wow, you can get a few, hun- you know, a few hundred per person. Uh, it's a huge amount of money to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, to the youth today, we'll ask you for maybe a thousand to, you know, uh, 800, 500 kind of range. I think the, 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 the market standard has increased also. But back then, um, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't see myself commanding the kind of value. And uh, probably because my own narrow perspective, I, I didn't command the kind of value for a very long time. But, that, 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 that was a huge source of revenue um, compared to coaching. And then gradually, you know, things begin to balance out. Uh, or rather, whatever I give attention and value to, whatever I give attention to, that, that expect goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one question. Yeah. I mean, like when we talk about sports, obviously there's always this uh, sporting competition elements to it, right? So is there a, a, a parkour competition in Singapore? Have you taken part in any? No. Um, I, 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 I haven't. Um, because even Paco has their own ideological battles. And back in the day, like in the very first conception, uh, one of the huge pilot, uh, pilot, uh, ideological debate was uh, if you do flips, you still consider Paco or not. Today, that, 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 bet, that, that um, ideological thought is no longer that contested. Generally, the understanding is that um, flips is kind of like part of parkour now. You you don't you don't distinct those two too much, uh, uh, so distinctly. But Sorry, yeah, I, I'm two, a I'm a layman. Yeah, why would you not consider a flip as a part of parkour? What's the problem with that? So 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 the uh, the ideological battle back in the day about flips was that parkour is meant to be efficient movement from point A to point B. Yeah, if you add a flip, the, the movement is not efficient. Yeah, it's so too flowery, is, la. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, it's too showy. So that showsmanship has another term by another founder, who is, I, I did that is because, the founders themselves were fighting among each other as well, because everyone wants to stand out, right, to a degree. So there was three main branches of parkour. There was the auto displacement out of displacement, auto displacement for French, out of displacement, parkour, and free running. So out of auto displacement is very, um, is, it didn't really leave France for a long of time. So generally the one that really exploded was parkour. And the, the, con- the, the common talk was the consensus was point A to point B, fastest and most efficient movement. If you add flips and anything showy and flowery, then it becomes free running. And this other guy who, they are, they are all from the same group, yeah? These other guys say that, but uh, you know, it's ex- about expression of self, it's about play. 
So, so these were all the ideological debates and, and fights over. So, but gradually over the years, then, you know, things have changed. So competition is one of those huge ideological fights. Because the conception about parkour is that it's supposed to be, uh, it's just supposed to be intrinsic. It's supposed to be, you know, you do it because you're doing for the betterment of yourself, not because you're trying to be better than someone else. And everyone is different. So you shouldn't, you know, compete against each other and see who's better because who's to say you are better. Yeah. So, so, so this was a um, huge debate for the longest of time. But to, to, for, for today, even the founders themselves have, they, they, they didn't outright say it because it would make them eat their own words, right? Which I genuinely understand. Um, but today, you see parkour competitions on TV. And, and that came about from, I think maybe 2007, eight. there was MTV Parkour Challenge. That generation of guys went against the ideological thoughts of the founders. And that was the start of a, you know, of a huge fight at that point of time. So parkour competitions today is quite gradually accepted to a degree. Um, yeah. But there was never there, there was never a parkour competition held in Singapore, was it? There is now. Like there, there is, is. Yeah? Okay. Uh, the the groups, the, 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 the generation uh, now, they yeah, they, they have they have kind of like legitimized themselves and they have like co compete amongst themselves. They have created who, who was organizing these competitions in Singapore? Um there's a couple of guys, um, but they are basically, so, how should I put it? So Ashton has his own company, but his company is, there's this other group of uh, people, they, they kind of like, it's an un, unofficial governing body of Parkour Singapore. And then now, now they have formally become an association, but the guys who started it is different from the guys who are running it now. Yeah. So, yolo. Okay. So how many people do you have in your team nowadays, in your studio nowadays? Students? Yeah. Uh, students about plus minus 50. Five zero. That's cool. Yeah, right. And what about your, your, your so-called parkour team? Do you... uh, well, truth be told, uh, gradually there, there wasn't really much of a team because there's, uh, you know, over the years, there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of infighting and stuff like that, then some of them didn't really want to, you know, they don't, they don't understand at that point of time that it is a tremendous amount of work with no reward at all for a very long time. So they didn't want to, or maybe they would, they think that I'm holding them back or like I did, I wasn't sharing the profits and stuff like that, but I was like, I was, I was doing all of that. But they don't, they don't see how little there was to give around. So, uh, they, so a lot of them started their own businesses, tried to do themselves, of course, came and go. So stuff like that. So, now so you're on your much, own? Your own? Yeah, I've been on my own for quite a long while. Wow. But uh, over the years, I have, uh, you know, some, some, some of these old boys, I try to get them and test and see if it works. Um, so some of them have dropped out. Or they have that, that you know went to gymnastics gym and teach them uh, teach in gymnastics gym and stuff like that. They're every now and then, if I got some projects or I really need help, then I'll hire them. It's not sometimes I have my students whom um you know I've cultivated over the years and they're pretty good that I can use for uh, help me to co coach or you know to go with me to run events and do workshops and often. Uh, what's your what's your plan? What's your hope? Today, now that you are in your thirties, you know, and you have gone through a lot, I have to say, you know, for, your, for a person your age, yeah. So, yeah, what's your plan? What's your hope? I I don't think I've gone through a lot. I think everyone has their own fair share of a lot. Um, I just took a different route. I'm the experiment. So, in my siblings, I'm the experiment because all of them, you know, do their own job. And when I was trying to start a business. It was just a thought, right? Um, they say, go, go for it. Why don't you try? And I, I'm pretty sure I'm just the experiment at home. Yeah, do a degree. Uh, what's my hope for the future? Um, 
now is understanding. Uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping to grow the team, but um, so so I'm hoping to to gradually like see if I can find guys that I can you know create a source of if they are interested in doing coaching and kind of thing, or they are interested in doing the business together. Um, so I can hire them, make a living for them. Yeah. So basically, is to continue to grow the business uh, in the sense of um generate enough profits to be able to make a living for someone else and if possible uh, grow a bigger space. That being said, doing all of that and work hard as hell to not sing because it's so easy mm. to sing. Well, I mean, especially COVID now, has, you know, yeah, especially now. Yeah, I mean the, 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 the heavy overheads mm. and then, yeah, so it's really easy yeah. to, to give up. Totally, yeah. especially now you're in a very vulnerable situation right now. Correct. So, so I I wouldn't say like profit, profits, and growing team, growing team is more. I think it's the same as ten years ago. It's just trying to stay alive, and then seize every opportunity, you know, for lack of a better term, by the boss, and mm. you know, squeeze out of it and make the best out of it. Yeah. You know? And you are still. You- you still believe in parkour and still want to promote parkour in Singapore as much as you did, you know, in 2010. I, I, because it's been all my life, mm. and not just in 2010, but I think because it has been with me all my life, I don't see it going away anytime in any way. Uh, even if I don't do it as a business, it's going to be part of me really. Lah. So I will spend some time to go out and train and stuff like that, right? But I, I kind of like, if possible, I, I do like to, you know, in Japan, they have this um, idea of finding your purpose mm-hmm. and you give your whole life to that one purpose. Yeah, so, so I, I really like that, that ideology in life, like how you, your whole life purpose orientates around that. And so your whole life is to tell that one purpose mm-hmm. and you try to make a magnus opus just before you... Uh, during your life and so when you depart right as in when you die uh, at least you make a significant contribution in that one aspect in that one sphere even if no one cares about it you know uh, even if you're not written the history books the main important point to me is giving your all right and holding nothing back because you got that only that one life now. and you might as well gamble it all in that one thing and even if it doesn't work out right then at least you have you know tried and, and there is no sadness on, or harm in someone who has given their all to try. Mm. That, that's, that's what I think. Um, then that's what I try very hard. Yeah, but being human, you know, you have your ups and your downs, right? Mm. But so far, looking at, you know, all the various um, people that I listen to, uh, Rancher Pao, yesterday now I was listening to Lee Kuan Yew, um, and you know, generally like Picasso, that kind of thing. So people who excel in their field, even if they were not recognized in their lifetime, having given their all to that one particular purpose, and that purpose hopefully is a purpose that is a, you know helping people, which I think I think mine does. Um, how much impact there is is a whole other story, and how successful I am doing it is a whole other story. But uh, it's just trying your best to, to make the best out of it. Though. Fantastic. Dude, I, 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 I know how seemingly inspirational this sounds, are, but... but that no, was no, 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 come on. Don't <laughs> get me wrong. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not, a, I'm not a young person or a romantic person, you know, with <laughs> these flowery but, ideas about... But, but, I, but, but I know you, yeah. life as much as you do, so... No, so, I... But you, I you yeah, go on. No, no, I wanted to say this point. Yeah. This point is, yeah, and that is this, um, that, that's the problem that I see in myself, you see. I am like that. And the problem with these kind of people is that um, you will always be chasing butterflies. <laughs> so I hate that about myself, but I understand that about myself. Chasing butterflies in the sense of there are people who are far much more practical and they will have what they want. They, they will have the beer in one hand and the TD in the other. Yeah. 
but I'm the kind of person that is chasing butterflies and it's a good and bad thing. Yeah. Now what I want, want uh, what I want, what I meant by inspiring, it sounded inspiring was the fact that, you know, like you are actually very admirable as a, as a, as a, as a, as a Singaporean. By the way, how old are you? Exactly? 34. 34. Okay. Now, 34. Okay, cool. No, uh, yeah. What I, what I mean by admirable, admirable is the, is the more correct word than inspiring like, to be honest because inspiring is so cliche nowadays you know admirable because uh uh one you know clearly you you have you have stuck it all out uh through you know all the bad and the good over the years and two you you are extremely articulate and intelligent you know in the way you are yeah meaning you you know what you're talking about you do know what you're doing and to be honest i mean like owning a studio space like this today at the age of 34 you know is 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 an achievement it's not nothing it, nothing just means that you know you're still a bum you know like uh, staying at your parents place <laughs> eating your parents uh, 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 food every day you know and still dreaming big you know but you're not exactly like that lah. that's that's my point you know and i think having this intelligence is 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 extremely important lah, you know because a lot of people, especially, you know, like sport athletes kind of profiles, I'm generalizing a little bit, but a lot of people who are into sports and all that, right? Generally, you know, like they're more physical than internal. You know what I mean? Well, I think you have these two aspects to yourself that helps you to, you know, balance your life a lot better lah, because you know when you speak about your life journey and and what you're doing and all that it does make sense to me right rather than listening to someone who, <laughs> who just wants to get famous just wants to look cool there are a lot of this type out there right especially in the parkour scene i'm very sure you know and 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 beyond seeing how cool they can do those stunts right once you listen to them for like, you know, 10 minutes or so, you can kind of more or less tell that, ah, you know, this guy is just a show off, you know, this guy is not, doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway, Ying, I have to go actually because I have another person waiting for me uh, at this point and uh, I, I got it recorded here and I think your story is fantastic. I really like it. There's a lot of authenticity, lah, you know, and also, as I say, intelligence is is is. is valuable in my opinion you know uh i will i will i will uh work on your story and all that and then i'll keep in touch with you and i yeah i mean yeah i got it i got all this recorded right now anyway so yeah so let's just keep in touch and all the best don't give up and yeah i know that life sucks uh, to be honest especially at this point i mean i do i do feel it too it sucks. Uh, it sucks to be where we are right now. Uh, you know, even I, I, I'm just, I'm an employee. You know, I'm making a so-called full-time salary as a TV producer, just making TV shows for a living for twenty over years. You know, I'm not looking at profit and losses at this point. You know, I don't make any losses. In fact, you know, I don't make profit ever, lah, You know, but but even then, you know, it it sucks. Uh, it really sucks at this point going through this thing together right yeah but yeah i'm sure you'll be fine okay sorry so can, can you send me the video as well which one uh the, the, this one no 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 we haven't made any oh no no i said this oh this this, this conversation yeah 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 absolutely i'll yeah. send it to you cool i have your email anyway okay yeah. take okay, care right. okay yeah. all right bye. Have a nice yeah. Day. Yeah. bye bye